Hi folks, so today's video comes a little later than I planned. In fact, I planned to do this video several weeks ago and I planned to do it in two separate videos because today I'm going to be talking about two different operating systems with a very common link. So for the past few weeks, I have been running uh, Debian on my laptop and Linux Mint Debian Edition on my main desktop machine. Now my main desktop machine is the machine that I use to do all the video stuff and all the recording, the live streaming, the podcast, all that kind of stuff. And then the laptop is like, I do a little bit of admin stuff for the, the live streams on it, but a lot of it is just like sort of personal, you know, you know, less YouTube -y things on it, really. Uh, more administrative uh, tasks that you might sort of expect from a, from a lower end laptop. And it's ThinkPad, so it runs just about any Linux distribution that you can throw at it. It's very reliable, but to be honest, it's one that I don't tend to change my distribution on very often because it is one that I actually use. With this one, as long as I'm not in the middle of a game where I have to faff around with backing up saves and everything, I, I tend to be quite, um, uh, you know, I, I play quite a fast and loose game with distros on this machine. This is the machine that I test distros on fundamentally. So, um... The distribution that I came from, I can't even remember what it was now. Um, I did play around with Fedora. I think I did have, um, yeah, Linux Mint LX um, XFCE version on it, which was very nice. I did kind of notice that XFCE is a little bit showing its age now, not necessarily in a bad way, but I wanted to see what Cinnamon was like. And Linux Mint Debian Edition only comes in Cinnamon. So a little bit this, of this is going to be a review of Debian. It's going to be a little bit of a review of Linux Mint Debian Edition, and it's also going to be a little bit of a review of the GNOME desktop and the, uh, the Cinnamon desktop and the differences uh, there within, because that's what I've been using mostly. And like I said, this is going to come to you in a s selection of videos, but um, if I'm completely honest, the reason why was because I never ended up finding much to say about them. Um, both distributions are really good. I think they have different use cases. You might deploy them in different circumstances. Um, but other than that, I installed them. I got on with them. I barely thought about them, both of them. Uh, Debian required a little bit more setting up. Um, interestingly enough, Debian actually came with Wayland um, as the display manager of default. I switched over to um, X11, Xorg rather, uh, and that's simply just because there were some uh, things I wanted to do on it that I couldn't do under Wayland. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and with Linux Mint Debian Edition, just out of the box, it was everything that I needed right there and then. Installing stuff was fine. Uh, one thing I will note with the Debian-based distributions that use the Debian repositories directly is that, yeah, like, the, the packages there are a little bit older, but I seldom found bugs. I don't think I found any bugs. Actually, if I'm completely honest, I don't think I found a single bug. Now, over the past, at least over the past year, I've been buying hardware that suits Linux specifically. Like, I've been going out of my way to find stuff that works for, for Linux. Before then, I just bought whatever, and I made it work on Linux. Um, but ever since the NVIDIA drivers, I, started, I, I noticed we're getting less higher quality getting a lower quality as as the recent years go by and in fact we you know uh, the regressions have crept in and not only i've noticed this but like others have noticed this drew noticed this in fact the day that i'm filming this this video which is you know it, it's kind of disappointing if i'm completely honest because um nvidia used to be like they used to be really good like the sacrifice you'd make is they had proprietary drivers but fundamentally other than that, they were really good. So I just picked up a, an AMD. It wasn't even a particularly good AMD. If I got the box around here, some, I do. I do have the box right under here. Uh, it's not a particularly fancy one. It's an RX 570. So I've got the... Uh, so that's all it is. That's all it is. A bit dusty from just being under there all the time. But yeah, like it's the the RX 570. So it's a, like, as far from what I can tell, I'm not a graphics card expert. I'm not a hardware person. Um, but at the end of the day, I just picked up something that I knew would work in Linux. It even says on the back of the box, works in Linux. That's pretty cool. I, I plugged it in and, and it just ran. It just ran like zero issue, zero issue whatsoever. Uh, haven't had an issue with it ever since. Um, I know that some people tend to get uh, quite, um, in, you know, like attached to one brand or another based on the higher performance cards. But to be honest, if you can play what I want to play, you know, at like medium diff uh, medium settings, I'm generally fine. And most of my AAA gaming, I think pretty much all of my AAA gaming nowadays is done either on GeForce Now or Google Stadia. So I don't need any uh, hefty graphics card. The most most heavy lifting it does is like recording this video. Uh, and the CPU is at 4.4. The hardware encoding works out of the box. I do in OBS need to go to the advanced settings to select VAPI. 
which is, I believe, what the hardware encoder is called. But like in the advanced settings, is it, you know, like th there's a lot, lot of stuff in there anyway that's that's quite worthwhile. Like for example, when I live stream, I live stream at 720, but it also encodes a 108, um, a 1080 version of live stream. So if I wanted to take a little clip and put it onto my gaming channel or something like that, then it was easy enough to do, and I didn't have to suffer with the 720 uh, resolution. But with streaming, um, especially in like Twitch, where you, where it doesn't encode down, uh, you don't. Um, it's it's safer to to stream in 720, but a lot of people now don't like videos in in 720. They prefer sort of 1080. When with YouTube, of course, and PeerTube, you can you can knock it down as required, which I guess kind of makes sense. Uh, a lot of these videos, like what I do, I don't think anyone would really care if I did them in 720. I think gaming videos, I think people tend to to notice more because it affects the graphical fidelity. But with these other videos, who cares? I mean, this is going out in 1080 unless I've you know, mistakenly changed the settings or whatever. But yeah, anyway, uh, that roundabout uh, tangent just basically leads me to this is this is this is everything I need out of a Linux distribution. Beware that there are slightly older packages. Linux Mint Debian Edition comes with flat pack support right out of the box, installed and as part of the uh, desktop environment. In fact, what I can do, I can switch over here. I've got my uh, thing there I could bring up the software center and there you go you've got like a flat pack tab right down there that tells you about all these you know you could do telegram desktop uh new image manipulation product gimp discord have um pulse effects so oh, I've not tried that one there's bitwarden um there's steam there's all kinds of stuff that you might get from there but um but yeah all in all uh it's it's a uh in terms of the, in fact, actually, in terms of the, the package manager, where where you use like your general utilities, like uh, I use KeyPass for example. You may notice the like, KeyPass icon down there. For you know, even Firefox, they use the ESR version of Firefox, which is like like the extended security release. I think it stands for. So it's like a, it's not as fast moving as the current version of Firefox, but it is hardened for security reasons. That works fine. And like if you do need a, a newer piece of software, like for example with OBS, uh, I want the latest version of OBS. Um, which has better hardware and coding support and all that kind of stuff. I just use the flat pack. Zero issue whatsoever. Zero, zero issue. I do drop down to the command line to do these things rather than use the software center. It's just faster. I, I think most Linux users after a period of time, once, you know, if you know what you want to install, dropping down in the command line uh, and just rolling with it is, uh, it, it's generally easier. It's generally preferable. That's why uh, I've turned off the, um, the update notifier because just casually every day or so, uh, I'll just check for updates manually, like when I've got a moment. Um, it, I, I can understand if, if you're not a computer person, you might need a, a reminder from here, you know, uh, here and, and from time to time. Uh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, and honestly, I'm going to say this. I probably will make a little bit of a, another video making my case a little bit more succinctly. I think that Linux Mint should go with Debian as their flagship distribution. I genuinely do. Um, it, Linux Mint themes in terms of its culture and in terms of the direction that it wants to go, that it wants to be like a bit more like Debian, but user friendly. This is what Linux Mint Debian edition is. I know like on occasion, I noticed like one or two minor differences where, where you can see it's like, oh, I see that's where Debian differs from Ubuntu. You see like these little things like um, how, how like, yeah, I mean, I can't even think of any of the dot med, but there's like a few things you'll notice. Oh, yeah, they do it like Debian in the LMDE version. Um, but you know, like whether or not that's by design or whether or not that's just inherited from Debian, it's neither here nor there. Like, my experience was fundamentally 99% the same, and, and in the 1% where it differs, it's not better or worse, it's just slightly different, it's just slightly a bit more Debian y. Um, it looks very nice, uh, in terms of the cinnamon desktop, I really like it. I really, 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 really like it. Um, and with this AMD card, I, I had some issues with the N Cinnamon desktop with the NVIDIA card, but with the AMD card, zero issues, zero recording issues, works a treat, works perfectly. Honestly, at this stage, like, I could use this over XFCE. You can set it up so that it functions like X XFCE. It, it, you can make it look like, like a GTK3 native version of XFCE. Now, I'm not throwing XFCE under the bus. It's a great distribution and has its place. Um, but whether or not we need XFCE and, for example, Mate now, two GTK2 paradigms, um, now I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. Um, 
But you know, I know there are people that use Mate Mate out there, and and I, I generally I generally don't like it when people say that an open source project needn't exist or nothing like that. So that's not for me to say. But I like Cinnamon's really good. Cinnamon's really really good. This like uh, I like how the dock works. So I can I can show you a little bit of Cinnamon now. Uh, okay, but yeah, you got these icons down the bottom. You can actually do something called hot corners, where uh, you can set set a corner of your screen, and then you can move your cursor into the say top left hand corner, which I've set it up there, and then you can have a look at all your um, at all your icons, which I think is like really cool. Not all your icons, all your all your desktop items, uh, which I think is um, uh, which I think is, is 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 pretty cool. I'm just gonna check something a minute that yeah, it is capturing my cursor, um, but yeah. Um, so what else can I show you? Uh, there's the software manager. Software manager is great. Like I, you just open it up. Uh, I don't know why transmission GDK is like the one that they're promoting. I've never understood that. Like it's it just like it. It kind of looks like an advert, but it's not really an advert. You can get Spotify. Like mm, uh, you got Scribus. You got Dropbox, Inkscape. A lot of these are. I think it's, is is Dropbox going to be the Flatpak version or native version? I don't know. I don't actually use uh, 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 Dropbox anymore. It, you know, I, I, I sort of fell out of love with it. I ended up just going with Sync thing. Uh, it ended up being more reliable, and you had more choices and and better use over it. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you could use here. In all honesty, this is like the second time I've opened Software Manager since installing this distribution. Um, Steam installs great out of the box. I installed the native version of Steam, not the Flatpak version of Steam. I was told that the Flatpak version of Steam isn't so good or doesn't work so well. Uh, the um, uh, terminal's fine. What terminal do we have here? Um, oh, just GNOME terminal. S solid terminal. Love it. Um, yeah, and then I love how the panel at the bottom here works. Uh, you can like, so for example, I've got system settings here. Uh, what you can do is when you've got any program open, you can just right click and do uh, pinned panel. And then you've just got like a quick launch panel there. The menu's great. I've made the menu a little bit bigger here. Uh, what have I got? So they've got some, I've got some update magic. You've got some icons here. You've got some things here. I like how, you, you know, you could just search it. You could use the, uh, the Windows key. You could just go press the Windows key. Very straightforward. Um, and to be honest, what I, what I've changed out of the box is basically nothing. I've changed the background wallpaper and I've changed the desktop theme. And so I'll go into the desktop themes because that's the kind of thing I look at, isn't it? Um, desktop themes. There it is. And I've changed it to Mint Y Teal. I think it was like Mint Y. Uh, yeah, I changed everything to Mint Y Dark Teal. Um, which is yeah. Actually, shouldn't my icons be Mint Y Dark Teal too? I, Honestly, I haven't, I haven't probably noticed, but there we go. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah. So because I like dark themes, but yeah, you've got like that when it comes to theme selection, you've you've got a choice between the old mint, uh, which is known as Mint X. You've got Mint Y, which is the new mint, uh, and all the the dark and light themes that go along. You can go brown, you can go orange, uh, and you can you can mix and match with the controls. If you want to something Christmassy, you can go green icons, red controls. Uh, you got pink, you got dark, you got light. You have got the old buttons that are a bit more like um, you know, three D. Or you've got the flat themes. Uh, it's not the world of choice, but there are plenty of cinnamon themes around there nowadays. They give you they give you the basic cinnamons, the Linux mints, the mint white, you know, and the, and the various color iterations thereof. Um, what do we got here? Oh, you got some. You got a theme store there. Um, I'm not going to bother updating the cache. Um, and then you got some settings, but like pretty limited. Uh, it is actually probably a very customizable uh, desktop. I've never tried. I've never even opened the desk desklets. So you know, and it, and it's like a little bit like I don't know. It's kind of like KDE of GTK3 almost. I guess it's got quite a lot there. The one thing I did notice with XFCE is that sometimes because it's evolved so much over time. Things aren't necessarily in a completely intuitive order to someone new to a distribution. Once you get in the habits of XFCE, they're very hard to get out of. You're very comfortable. XFCE sings like a bird for you. I get that. And XFCE is for people that have been using XFCE for a long time. New users, Cinnamon's perfect. Cinnamon truly is perfect. Um, because it's like window it's like it's like it's kind of it's like kind of like old window i don't like comparing it to old windows it's just intuitive like it's just like you've got the button in the bottom left hand corner you, have, you select all your programs and all that kind of stuff and then and then it goes and it goes you've got your you know your file managers and your all this kind of stuff and you know 
it's, it's, it's all good, you know, that's, you know. Uh, like I said, there's, there's not that much to say about it, there's not much that to say about it at all, uh, it looks great, um, I could, I could, for a laugh, for a laugh, I can show you change desktop background, right, and I can show you, they've got a decent selection of, of background wallpapers, what's this one? This one looks lovely, doesn't it? Oh, that's, that's, that's kind of nice. I like the colours on that one. Uh, Florence. Ooh. Uh, is that actually Florence, or is that like a miniature version? That kind of almost looks like a miniature version. The only thing with a lot of these background wallpapers that I don't like is you've got the blurring effect. Um, I, I tend to, to prefer... Um, oh, that's lovely. Um, although I've got to admit, another fussy thing about me, I don't like the sun-in shot. Um... That's not too bad because it's kind of behind the. But that's why I think I think the the Arctic, uh, not the at the top, um, worked quite well for me. Argentina. Oh, look at that! Beautiful. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to pick now. I'll go back to it at the top. Uh, that's just little hang-ups of mine anyway. But in all, uh, for all intents and purposes. Uh, I, I really can't, you know, the system tray, you've got a system tray, if you don't want a system tray, like with Gnome, of course, they've taken out the system tray, system tray's right back in there with Cinnamon, um, but I gotta say, yeah, like if you want, um, I was trying the Gnome desktop, which is the, I won't show any clips from, from Debian, because quite frankly, Debian just comes with a vanilla Gnome desktop, I used the non-free version of Debian uh, to make sure all the drivers were accounted for, codecs and stuff were accounted for, so I, I did that, but it, you know, Debian do a non-free bundle, so that's, you know, so it is still Debian, Debian. Um, it came with the vanilla version of GNOME. I, can't, I really like that, actually. I really like the vanilla version of GNOME. Honestly, I could probably live with most desktop environments quite comfortably now. I've got GNOME over here uh, on the laptop. I've got Cinnamon over here. I don't, you know, there's no, diff you know, I don't get mixed up between one or the other. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, um, it's all good. It's all good. Like, I, I could live on GNOME. I could live on Cinema. I could, I could live on KDE. I could live on XFCE. I think I could live on most desktops. Like, I think nowadays my preferences are just not as hardline as they used to be. A lot of great desktop environments out there, uh, and I can't speak ill of any of them. Um, you know, the, I think I would probably pick the one that's the most stable, but they're all pretty stable nowadays. They're all pretty stable nowadays, from my personal experience. Um... I, I think, you know, there's a case to be made, should I pick Cinnamon for, for Debian? Debian comes with a Cinnamon build. Uh, pretty, I don't know what it looks like out of the box. I remember when I did, I, I was doing, I was originally going to put Mate, uh, uh, the, uh, um, Debian Mate, but Debian's version of Mate is not great. Like, it, it, it Debian, uh, Mate shows its age with the Debian implementation. It's not, like, Ubuntu Mate, really great distribution, but, but, but the Mate desktop has been polished quite a lot, and you don't tend to notice it. Same with the uh, Linux Mint. The Mate desktop has been polished quite a lot, and you don't tend to notice it until you come across a, a desktop that's just come out as vanilla. And Debian desktops tend to, from what I've seen, just come out as vanilla, which, you know, if you're using Debian, that's great. And actually, that, that brings me on to my sort of, sort of final, final act of this particular video. Uh, should you do uh, Debian or should you do Linux Mint De uh, Debian Edition? For all intents and purposes, you're going to uh, eventually, once they're both set up, you'll be able to do this, the same on either, right? Nowadays, your distribution of choice really doesn't matter that much. Just choose what feels ni nice to you. Now, that being said, there are two differences between Debian and Linux Mint um, that I think you should uh, necessarily sort of appreciate. With Debian, when I was setting it up, I did notice, and I, as I was interacting with some members of the Debian community, there is an expect, you're expected to know how an operating system, there is an expect, like an expected level of knowledge that you're supposed to have when it comes to Linux operating systems, right? Um, and that's not to, to disparage the, the Debian community. The Debian community were lovely people, and I don't have a word to say against them. They were absolutely perfect and very kind to me uh, whenever I needed uh, help with anything or was, or was talking to them or anything like that. Uh, one of the best communities out there, you know, sterling, sterling folks. Uh, but there is that expect, expected level of knowledge. Like, you're, if you're new to Linux, you're not expected to throw yourself into Debian. You probably could do if you're willing to read the documentation and take your time. Um, but the community itself sort of expects, you know, you know if people are choosing Debian, they're, they're choosing Debian for a reason. Uh, either they're clued up on the software freedoms, or they want to, um, or they like the, the the technical, you know, aspects of it. Uh, with Linux Mint as a, as a wider community, because I would say that Linux Mint Debian Edition is just an extension of the Linux Mint community at large. Uh, the Linux Mint community, again, 
wonderful community. They're one of the communities that actually brought me into the Linux world. I, you know, so that's very important. But there is not that same expect expected level of knowledge. Like if you're completely new to Linux, and you don't know what you're doing. The Linux Mint community, I, I feel, are a more suitable place because they're more. I think they're more equipped to deal with some of the challenges that newcomers might face. Whereas the Debian uh, community are like, they're a bit more serious Linux users and they expect you. And when I say an expected level of knowledge, they expect you to know what a display manager is, what a desktop environment is, um, how, how, a, how a drive is partitioned, for example. These are, these are not complex things to, to Linux nerds, but to someone who is moving from Windows to Linux, maybe so. So uh, if I was, uh, recently I've been taken to like, when people ask me to, recommend a distribution for newcomers to Linux. I tend to put them onto Linux Mint because it's got that level of stability, um, but it's also like it's got that like uh, expectation that new users will use it. And I've had zero complaints when I when it when it comes to to uh, new users on on Linux Mint. Um, I have heard complaints, or not complaints, criticisms rather, that it's not always the best idea to model a desktop environment after Windows because people expect it to behave like Windows. But in all reality, like the Cinnamon desktop, it, like it doesn't really behave like Windows. It certainly doesn't behave like Windows 10 from what I understand it. Um, just because it has a panel at the bottom. The panel at the bottom is just a logical place to have it. Um, it's, you know, when you've got, you know, you've got, your, you've got certain like application buttons at the top and then you've got operating system buttons down at the bottom. And that's fine. Like, I mean, I like how, how Gnome, I like how Ubuntu do it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you get used to whatever gets put in front of you after a couple of months. Like, it really, you know, things like that, not important in my mind. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I think that Linux Mint Debian Edition, like, if you are completely new to Linux, for the time being, go with, like, the main Linux Mint, whatever, whatever it is that they're putting front and center. Uh, because that's going to be the one that's most supported, most tested, what they'll expect you, you to use. So that would be Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition as is. To be honest, like, I think there's a case to be made. Does it need, does there need to be a Linux Mint Mate at this point? I think, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just, you know, just putting that out there because you've kind of got two GTK2 paradigms there. And I know that Linux Mint is a, a slightly more conservative distribution from a technical standpoint because of reasons of stability. And that that's a really good thing because Linux for newcomers is is quite easy to learn how to use when it goes right the trouble is when something goes wrong uh it can be quite difficult for for newcomers because um you've got a very modular operating system with a with a, a user friendly front end and and you know when you have to get beneath the depths of that user friendly front end um it can be challenging to to new users and a lot of people do not care about their operating system as much as we do like you know, I always like to use. Uh, actually, it was it was a uh, garden of the Linux Linux gamer who who used this comparison that I've nicked off him basically, which is, you know, like think about it of a, 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 as you might think about your car. Like most people don't care about what goes on under the hood of their car as long as it gets them from A to B. That's what they care about. They'll pay someone else to do the difference. Um, a lot of people feel like that with their, their their operating system. You know, they want a good one, but as long as it gets them from A to B, generally speaking, that's what they want. Uh, and to be honest, like, I think for a lot of people who don't care about computers, you know, like, I, I think Windows, for the most part, is probably a happy home for them. If they don't care about software freedom, if they don't care about uh, communities owning, uh, the, the you know, or, or sort of, yeah, like community ownership and autonomy of the software on it, um, and, and, and the philosoph philosophy behind Linux, and they're not going to make use of the technical advantages that Linux can offer, um, you know, they can use Windows and, and, you know, find someone else to support it, really. Like, I've, I'm certainly not as evan uh, evangelical as I was about it several several years ago. But people, you know, and, and like when you use Linux and when you have a YouTube channel, you, you know, you talk about it in your natural course of, of, of hobbies and, and in, you know, day to day, people will ask you about it naturally. And, and like, I've brought people over to Linux because they've come to me, not because I've gone out and, 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 and taken it to them. Um, and I think that's probably the best way of getting Linux on board. Um, but yeah, definitely work on your spiel if you if you ever want to sort of bring people over to the Linux fold and get make sure. And I think the most important thing is I should probably do a video about like you know bringing people over to Linux as well. Actually, since I've done it a few times now, um, is like temper their expectations appropriately. Uh, Linux users are terrible at overselling what Linux is to people that aren't interested. Like if they're you know, if they are interested in, in the politics and the philosophy of, of, of software autonomy and software freedom, then great. 
uh, everything else they can sort of hop on board with. If they're interested in a technical challenge, by and large, those users will work their way to Linux without help, to be honest, to those that are looking for the challenge, because they'll be willing to read through wiki pages and forum posts and all that kind of stuff. So um, for all intents and purposes, you know, it, it, uh, as much as I'd like to see an open source uh, distribution reign supreme, as we've often talked about on my live streams, you know, what would Linux look like if it went mainstream? It probably looked like Chrome OS, or it would probably look like Android. You know, like the Linux in and of itself, on its own, does not equate itself to software freedom and software autonomy. Like, there's a whole layer of philosophy on top of that. Linux is just the foundation for that, and from that foundation, you can you can go all all astray because what's a Linux distribution if you know? Every day you open up Facebook, every day you have Spotify, every day you have Instagram, every day you have uh, every Amazon and Google and Microsoft service installed onto your software with, you know, no VPNs and no good habits as well, like software security and software privacy and all that kind of stuff. That's like most of that's behavioral stuff. Like um, being completely carefree on a Linux distribution is 10 times worse than being careful on a Windows distribution. Uh, I know people that harden Windows, and I imagine from their expertise that they do quite a good job of it. And their their operating system is probably more secure than most Linux users. Um, you know, but but like, like again, and I'm going off on a major tangent, is that to me, like, it's the political and philosophical um, reasons that really do attract me to Linux, uh, because you know it's it's the idea of communities coming together and building software, and making that software freely available. Uh, to all is something that I find incredibly uh, moving, if I'm completely honest. And that's what keeps me there. And that's why I'd be on Linux if it was better or worse than Windows. Like, in all honesty, I am a terrible advocate as to say whether or not Linux is better or worse than Windows, because I've not used Windows in forever. I use Macs at work, and they're terrible. I appreciate the philosophy behind Macs, where, like, Macs, you know, they sort of make a games console you know, they cross the games console with a PC insofar that, great, you've got you've got a, a PC that does the basic things. It's well supported because, like, Apple support only have to deal with, like, one set of hardware, one operating system. They know the stack from top to bottom. That's great. They can help everyone and they can bulletproof it quite well, not only from a security standpoint, but also from a user-friendliness standpoint, stability standpoint, etc. Yeah, well, in my experience, it doesn't always work like that. Like, I've dealt with a number of faulty Macs that have just got hardware defect, uh, that are just defective in the hardware. Um, but, I mean, all, all things aside, and my grumbling aside, like, the idea is pretty solid, and a lot of the hardware that does come with Macs is pretty pretty sound. Um, again, different audience than myself, but, you know, if, if, if all you want to do is use Adobe, Adobe After Effects or whatever, then sure, use a Mac, you know. You're you're paying more than it's worth, but you're also paying for like a degree of security and user friendliness for that kind of thing. And in all honesty, like I do that with other things in my life. I do that with my car. Um, you know, like I'll I'll buy things that are perhaps you know maybe I could get it cheaper if I either shop around or or put something together myself or something like that. But at the end of the day, I you know I, I don't mind paying a little extra if it's just a smoother process to uh, to, to 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 get my car up and running. Um, that being said, I'm actually kind of mildly interested in the goings on in my car, but it's for me, it's still something that I'm very much learning about. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, that's quite a rambly video. And, and really, what have I said about Linux Mint Debian? It's, it's pretty good. The only thing to be wary of is the packages might be slightly older. And if if such an occurrence occurs, such an occurrence occurs, if such a thing occurs, use flat packs that are built into the software center. Um, I haven't had to, but I assume that snaps work quite well on Debian. Um, but also, failing that, app images are pretty cool. I, I've got a whole stack of app images that I bring onto every operating system I use. You know, things like Caden Live and such. And they, they work a treat, you know? So, yeah, like, um, I believe that there's a new version of Debian that's not too far away now, sometime in 2021. I believe a Debian version might be released. Uh, could be mistaken on that. I, um, but yeah. Uh, all, th all things considered, though, uh, I, I do think that Linux Mint should consider Linux Mint Debian Edition as their flagship distribution. And I actually haven't said the reason for this so far. Uh, partly that it does line in with its values like Linux Mint Debian Edition and, uh, and Debian in general. Very stable, very well uh, tested foundations. 
that's worth some that's worth something in and of itself now that's not not, not to disparage ubuntu ubuntu is a fine distrib- set or well, fine distribution fine set of distributions and this is certainly not going you know like i'm not having a go at ubuntu but ubuntu is a corporate distribution similar to fedora which means it's backed by a corporation which means that it's not going to necessarily evolve and change and adapt to the end users like the linux users like us as interest like it may do but it's not designed that it's designed to be uh it's designed for canonical the company and the company's endeavors now whether or not that company wants to enamor us to use its desktop environment to normalize it to test it to build software for it that's probably all part of the the plan but at the end of the day i would rather a distribution that doesn't think of me as a an asset or a cog in a machine or a part of a community that it can be exploited um but rather um you know i'd rather have an operating system that was built by by people i know by by digital neighbors um and i i you know corporate distribution is great like the you know ubuntu has contributed massively to linux software in fact uh, as i understand it uh, when ubuntu make improvements to debian software because ubuntu is based on debian uh, they they upstream it uh, by default uh, which is great so a lot of the benefits that you get from debian they're the result of canonical and ubuntu so i'm certainly very grateful for that um but debian is a community-based distribution uh, ubuntu is a corporate-based distribution um, and it will serve Canonical before it serves us, which is fine. That's what it's built for. That's what it's, you know, and it may be serving us today, but who knows when, you know, a change in management and a change in, in the desktop team will occur. And, and that may not necessarily always be the case because it's not built for that case, you know? So that's just my cynicism around big companies working in our interest, but big companies don't work in our interest. They work in their own interest. Um, they just do like that's not a, that's not that's not even a criticism of them that's just just a fact like a, a business has to look out for itself and if it means um forming a um a, you know a symbiotic relationship with the, with the linux community for the time being then great but it will only carry on that relationship when it's when it's being when it's benefited from it that's the thing it's a this is you know what i'm saying is that you using ubuntu is not you engage necessarily engaging in free software so much as sort of being a part of a wider business transaction lending you know maybe it might be that by building for snaps and all this kind of thing you're 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 bolstering the framework or the 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 intellectual property value and the assets of of canonical um you know which is fine because it's a two-way street like that's part of open source like again not trying to be too like critical here but like that that again is part of the deal like um open source big companies contribute to open source we get the benefits they get you know like the benefits that they get um and that's great but when 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 it comes through to to benefiting our side of the deal i like the canonical uh, the canonical and, and ubuntu upstream to debian because then we can use debian and, and debian's um built for its end users by the community and that's great and then linux mint also a community-based distribution so it doesn't have the backing of a big corporation like canonical behind it now it does use ubuntu as the base for its main operating system so sort of by through transition by just being related to the ubuntu distribution there are going to possibly be um effects made in the corporate interest that funnel through to the linux mint end user an example of that is snaps like snaps uh uh, convenient technology no doubt um they are but they are centralized and the back end is proprietary that's just again the, you know and, and 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 it's built to benefit uh canonical canonical and ubuntu are very very strong in the server space that's great snaps great software for deploying a server if you want to deploy a server really quickly snaps are great for that kind of thing so they want to develop all of this technology so that they can sell it on the server space that's great great business move but um when for example uh chromium is not brought through into the native packages but into the snaps instead again perfectly understandable because chromium is one heck of a dickens to compile and to compile for all the architectures and all that kind of stuff and then support all those architectures oof, wouldn't want that job and i don't think anyone wants that job and that's why working on snaps is great however linux mint who don't necessarily want to engage in the centralized repository of, of snaps, which is fair, um, then are a bit of an impasse because um, uh, 
they either have to use snaps or they have to find another way of including that package in their in their repository um and then some people say well yeah but you are just sort of riding off of the back of ubuntu's repositories in the first place and it's like well yeah so you know which that's a debian debian are, are more community focused there's more share and share alike in in in, in the spirit of it um, and I guess that's where I'm kind of coming from, is that a community distribution like Mint is better suited built on a community distribution like Debian, because the transition to me is a lot more logical, right? Debian, community distribution built for its users. Linux Mint, community built distribution made for its users, like, because it's not built from the ground up, it's usually based, you know, like, it's, it's a layer on top of another distribution is Linux Mint. Linux Mint will take an operating system, they'll make it more user-friendly, they'll make they'll give a better out-of-the-box experience. And Linux Mint are great, like the software that comes bundled out of the box with Linux Mint is a lot of the software I use because it's the, I think they know the, the the users that they're making it for so well. Um, so to do that on top of Debian, I, it just feels like a much more natural fit to me. Take out the company middleman, right? Like, you know, let companies look after companies and, and contribute to open source as and when they can. Um, and as and when they will, but like, yeah, like Linux Mint Debian Edition, uh, functionally, basically the same. Uh, if you need newer packages, I think I think Debian should build them itself in a Debian repository rather than Ubuntu one, which is what they do, um, you know, as and when they need to. Um, the non-free stuff like drivers and Wi-Fi stuff that works a treat on Debian uh, on Linux Mint Debian Edition as well. Um, but yeah, and I think you know coming behind that with a strong community because the thing that sells uh, a distribution to me in a lot of ways is the community now each uh, Linux distribution will have its own community there'll be a lot of people that flutter from community to community or are a member of several communities um, and that's all good as well but each one has their own character and, um, and and they're suited to different end users like there'll be a, a certain kind of community that forms around Arch that forms around Gentoo that forms around like the BSDs or Haiku or anything like that um, and I think it is important if you're going to be an engaged member of a Linux community to like pick the one that fits you. Um, no, no I, I don't say any are better or worse than, than any other. It's just like, yeah, different users, you know, different users will find different communities uh, beneficial in different ways. And uh, that's, you know, that's kind of the great thing about Linux and its so-called fragmentation issue, uh, which isn't an issue, it's a strength. Um, and actually someone the other day said it to me as well. It's like Linux isn't fragmented, it's modular. You can switch out the kernel for whatever one you want. You switch out the desktop environment for whatever one you want. Switch out your display manager for whatever one you want. You can switch out all this other stuff. Like it's just like it's modular. That's all it is, it's modular. And like the distributions itself is just the skeletal framework which is all which all slides in with it. Not fragmented, it's modular. Um, so anyway, that's a heck of a ramble. Um, and most of it's been like Linux Mint Debian edition, like because Debian is just Debian is as Debian does, right? You, you if um, yeah, like I'm really happy with Debian. It's great. Um, I'm really happy with Linux Mint Debian edition. It's great. Like it, I got zero complaints. I don't know what to say. Like it's good. Um, so yeah, like if you're interested, pick it up. If not, don't. Um, use whatever you want. To be honest, distributions nowadays, like what what goes into me picking a distribution is, you know, it, I suppose the community is less important to me than it used to be because it's like I already know what I want to do and how to do it for the most part. Um, I like to have a, to, you know, like like I'd like to like one of the things I like about Linux Mint as a, as a community is 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 that like there's more chance that I'm able to help other people. I'm not I can't help anyone who uses Debian because I ain't smart enough. But like there are going to be there, there'll be like Linux Mint users who are like, uh, oh, how do I you know bring snaps into my Linux distribution into my Linux Mint distribution things like that? I can help with stuff like that, but like I'm I'm not high level technical user and therefore so. But yeah, um, but and it's also the software philosophy as well. Like how married are they to the idea of of free software and the spirit of it? Less so about the letter of it. Like I'm not going to run out and and use like one of those ultra free distributions like. Parabola or Pure OS or Triscal, great distributions, but the hardware support for them, or yeah, the hardware support for them is just, it's a bit touch and go, isn't it? Like that's another level of having to buy your hardware to, 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 to run your operating system. Uh, I think that's great and all, but like as someone that does multimedia streaming, etc., I, I do need those, I do need some of the non-free stuff. I try and minimize my use of it as much as possible. And I think that Linux Mint grab that balance really well. They grasp that balance really well. But, um, 
but at the end of the day, I, I don't think I'm ready. Like I'm close with the Debian here. It's like Debian. It's, I use Debian non-free for the codecs and things like that. But like the vast majority of that software on my laptop is uh, is uh, free and open source software, which is which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, so I think that's about it uh, for me today. Heck of a ramble. Um, I'm glad that you uh, were able to join me for it. And um, yeah, like I do. I think that Linux Mint should consider Debian Edition as their primary edition. I think it moves it, you know, like it's, they have that, that conservative base. They have that, uh, that, that, that community attitude and what Linux Mint can, like Linux Mint can bring something to that. It can bring a great out of the box experience and make Debian more accessible to new users. Um, and not even just new users, just non-technical users. I'm not a new user, but I appreciate the layer, the layer of polish that Linux Mint brings to Debian. Like this is the most polished version of Debian you will ever see. Uh, is Linux Mint Debian Edition. Um, like, it helped keep, even keep the name. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, you know, remem- remind people that it's Debian. Call it Debian Mint or something like that. You know, like, okay, I'm just laughing around now. It's, 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 it's pretty late. But, um, yeah, like, I, in, all, in all seriousness, love it. Love it. It just, like, it's, like I said, I, the reason I haven't said that much about it, and I've been rambling about other stuff for, like, 40 minutes now, it, it's simply because... Like it just gets on and does the job. Both of them do. You know, you've got the power of Debian with a nice layer of polish on top of it. And over here, you just got the power of Debian. And GNOME, to be fair, pretty polished desktop. Works great. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you folks very much for watching. Um and uh I uh, yeah. Um until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Italy. So uh, as this channel is now part of the Destination Linux network. Uh, I'm uh, obligated to do this ad read, so um, here we go. All kinds of terrible things can happen when you don't take care of your digital security, and that, of course, includes your passwords. The password manager used and trusted by the Destination Linux network is Bitwarden. Bitwarden lets you set up things like a PIN to easily access your password manager, as well as additional authentications such as master passwords and adding phrases to fingerprint security, uh, all to keep your passwords safe. Bitwarden is the easiest and safest way for individuals, teams and businesses to store, share and sync sensitive data. Go to bitwarden.com forward slash DLN to get started for free. To make things even better, Bitwarden is 100% open source. You can self-host and their code is audited. So go to bitwarden.com forward slash DLN to get started for free. The $10 per year premium account gets you one gigabyte of encrypted file storage, two setup login with YubiKey, U2F or Duo, Vault Health Reports, time-based one-time password authenticator storage and generation, and priority customer support. So thanks to Bitwarden for sponsoring this video and for all round being a good egg to the Destination Linux network.